December 31st, 2022, y'all. We got to get our black eyed peas that are soaked overnight ready for our Christmas dinner. I'm going to freeze frame. <laughs> Did I say Christmas dinner? Well, I meant New Year's Day dinner. Make a real easy recipe pepper, some seasoning salt. We're using Lowry, classic, and salt. Okay, I'll add our salt first. I'm going to use a little olive oil and water, will be the what we use for our recipe. And remember, when it comes to seasoning, you can always add more, but you, can, you can't take it out. So be careful on the front end adding that seasoning. Oh, Lowry. We're going to cover our black eyed peas with water. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of vegetable. Um, this is olive oil. You can use any oil you like. Traditionally, in um, southern cooking, we use lard, animal fat, pork, something like that. However, remember vegetable oil is non-saturated. We just want to add enough water to cover the, the black eyed peas. I'll bring that in for a close-up for you. Ready for your close-up, Mr. DeMille? I'm gonna let you see that. I'll bring the camera in. Boom, just cover. You can see the olive oil there, all right? Now we're gonna bring this, turn this on, bring it to a boil. And lower it, let it simmer until the beans are nice and tender. There we go. All right, y'all. Collard greens coming up. Collard greens are available year round. The ones on the left, those are southern collard greens. The ones on the right are ones you get in California. Great tasting, fabulous, loaded with vitamin A. All right, collard greens. I, um, we've always had collard greens and black eyed peas on, on New Year's Day for luck and money, right? Um, a lot of folks are just taking chop their collard greens up. What mama taught me way back when was that you got to remove that big stem. If you want your greens, this is why I don't buy pre-packaged collard greens because they chop those stems up and this really makes your greens bitter. So take your time, remove that big woody stem. I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me de-stem all these. However, that's the key. You don't want that. You know, just... 86 days using a mulch pile. A few years ago, I was having a hard time finding enough collard greens, so I added um, kale. And the same principle with the kale. Kale has a very similar flavor when cooked as collard greens. However, it doesn't take nearly as long to cook. The same process of so remove that big stem, right? Remove that big stem so they, they're nice and tender. All right, I'm going to clean these up, wash them, then we're getting ready to go on the stovetop, and uh, I push the black eyed peas to the other side, bring it to a boil, and let them just simmer two, three hours till they're nice and tender. Okay, back in a flash. Michigan TCU are playing. Later on, we got them Georgia Bulldogs. How about them dogs? Go, dogs, go. The black eyed peas have started to boil, and I'm going to let them rapidly boil for about five to ten minutes. Then we'll lower it and allow it to simmer until they're nice and tender. Okay, we have the greens ready. They've been de stemmed, and I've torn them into bite sized pieces, and you can tear them even smaller if you like. However, they will cook down. With this recipe, instead of using olive oil, I'm going to use corn oil here, about two tablespoons. You can use a little more if you like or a little less. Remember, fat is where the flavor is at, so we do need to add a little fat to our meat-free dishes. Uh, again, traditionally, it was you, we use lard or some type of animal fat, a piece of uh, ham or whatever was in there. Uh, salt, pepper. There's the salt, pepper. And again, the reminder, less is always better because you can always add more, okay? Now, I started a few years ago adding green pepper, bell pepper to mine. If you like them hot, go ahead and use a hotter pepper. And I'm going to use some diced, well, some chopped onion I had uh, left over from, I think another dish we made a couple days ago, Lisa made. Um, and instead of using onion seasoning or onion salt, we'll just use fresh onion there. Top it with some agawa. And again, you can use any fresh herbs and that you'd like 
or dried herbs. Again, we're not going to cover these like we did with the um, with the black eyed peas. Just enough water because when the collars cook, they will release a lot of liquid as well. I will be placing a lid on top of this one. Again, we'll let it cook down to the nice and tender. Then we'll check for flavoring, and that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go watch some football. Michigan is having a got their hands full right now with TCU. 14-3 Horn Frogs. The black eyed peas and the collard greens are a cooking. <laughs> the house smells good. Watching um, Michigan and TCU right now, getting ready for those Georgia Bulldogs, taking on those Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, we've talked a lot about this first quarter of the new year. I'm taking a uh, master gardener gardening course and um, so we're going to get started today. This is the last day of the new year, of the old year, I should say. Um, and here's my, my booklet. And I've talked with you all in the past about how, or I've shared with you, my struggle with reading, not learning to read till age 26. And during the interview process, um, it was interesting when I was in the interview and answered all the questions that were asked of me and uh, you know I've, I'm at a point in my life now where you know I'm I'm able to advocate for myself as well as others and it was a very interesting point to me in the during the interview process when um, I was being asked about all the reading I'd have to do and so on and so forth and I'm so after that was over I I said to the uh, people that was doing the interview okay so I have to share with you all that um I can read, however, I didn't learn to read till I was 26. I'm a good reader, however, I'm a slow reader. And I said, what has been put in place to help those of us, because I've realized and found out that there's more than just me being a slow reader in this country and around the world. Um, what have you put in place to help us? What scaffolding have you um, erected so that I can succeed? You're telling me about the difficulties, what have we done to make it so that it's an equitable situation for people like myself? Um, and I got some blank looks. So I said, don't worry, y'all. I will figure this out for me, for Curtis George Aikens Sr. I'll figure this out. However, once I've figured it out, I hope we can put this in place for the next Curtis Aikens that comes along or the next slow reader that wants to be in this program. Um, Learning, education, knowledge, all those things are true power. Because I'm not a fast reader, should I be shut out of that information um, vault? Let's open up that vault of learning for everyone. And I'm going to share with you um, an app that I found that I like. I'm not saying I'm in love with it yet. There are some flaws. Uh, and I looked at a lot of apps. I, I, I went through and the one that I'm using is called Speechify. Now, I'm going to reset the camera so I can show you this and show you how it works. Um, because my first week for the first week's homework comes from this book, California Master Gardener Handbook. And we are to read the first 19 chapters. And that takes us to about this point in the book, right? <laughs> a lot of pages for a slow reader. Um, and it's interesting when you're reading for fun, it just jumps at you, right? When we are, when we're reading or when I'm reading for knowledge, it's a slower process, right? So what I've discovered and learned is when I'm listening to the text, it helps my eyes move across the text quicker. It helps me because I'm hearing it as well as seeing it. My comprehension goes up. So I want to share this with you. And then I also want to share this with as many school teachers as possible, this, this app called Speechify. There's a free version that I've been using the, for the last two or three weeks because I want to critique the free version so that if you or someone you know can't afford it, we can still work with the free version. You can still work with the free version. They can still work with the free version. I think this this technology and 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 thank people like Tim Tim Cook at Apple or you know Steve Jobs who created the company. The, the things that I love my Apple device because I can highlight the text no matter what it is and it will read it to me. And again, it helps me to 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 see the text, hear the text, comprehend the text. 
Okay, that's one of the great things about these, these, these. Um, what is it called? Um, IA. Um, I forget what IA stands for. Something into artificial. What's the IA stand for, baby? Or is it AI? Artificial intelligence. Artif thank you very much. Artificial intelligence. Um, so anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm rambling here. However, it's something I really want to share with moms and dads and teachers and, and people who are having that student that's struggling with their reading. It's okay to have a read along. Because for me, it's helped me comp comprehend this stuff so much better. 19 pages of some very interesting stuff, you know, because I love to garden. And I'm learning things. I, I told Lisa before I took this class, I said, you know, I'm going to be having to take this course to get a credential for something that I, I probably know as much as anyone who's going to be in the course. That being said, y'all, this first week of reading, I've still picked up a lot of new things, okay? All right, let me reset the camera, show you this speechify, and then we'll start setting up this uh, this first quarter of the year. The first, you know, four months of the show are going to be about this class. I'm going to share with you what I learned, and we're going to go to work. Peace. Back in a second with this speechify app. All right. Well, that first semifinal game between Michigan and TCU is a pretty good football game suddenly. Um, TCU just scored again. This is the Speechify app. And if you're not sure how to do this on your smartphone, now I use the Apple stuff because my sweetheart is an Apple person. Um, just go to the App Store right here, and I'm sure it's the same on other devices. And I believe you can also get this for your computer and or laptop. So just go to the App Store. And what I'll do is, you know, because I'm not the world's greatest speller, I'll just say Speechify. Comes up, Speechify, Speechify text, boom, boom, boom. All right, and there should be a free one. So we'll type in free. F R E E. Did I spell that correct? Yes, I did. Search. There it is. Now I already have it, so it's in mine already, so I can either update it and. Uh, I'm not sure if they have an update for the free version, so maybe I shouldn't mess with that. Just going to update my software. All right, so we've got the Speechify app updated and open. And, you know, I've... insects, that's what we're doing here. Scales, white flies, him and, and then you can just fly, uh, Wasps, ants, read along with it. Now, there the are some problems with the free Wasps, app, new... and I'm going to show you those videos in a minute or two. So I'm going to finish this first homework assignment using the free version. All right, so there's our Speechify app. You just click it to open up. These are chapters that I've scanned in. House plants, um, safe, sustainable. All these are chapters, that first 19 chapters I have to read. How do we get there? Once you're on this screen, you hit the plus sign. However, I found it's easy to do it on my iPhone. And um, the, the documents, once they're scanned in, they will go to, because it's a cloud driven, I believe that's the term, um, you can use it on all your devices. So I'm lowering it down so we can take a, see the picture of me recording or taking text in, okay? That's my iPhone. Forgive me for the shaking there. So we, Tap the plus sign right there. Insects. Whoops, <laughs> it wants to read it to me. So we're gonna go uh, here, oops. Hit the plus sign. See where it says scan or take a picture, gonna press scan. I've got 11 chapters already scanned in. So let's go to, this is the next chapter. And um, it's pretty cool. Just kind of line it up and you'll take a picture of it and then speechify, press the put. Speechify takes it in. Once you get the chapter or as many pages as you want, I'm going to just do two now for demonstration purposes. Press the ahead button. You see, say press done. Now it is 
formulating the, the picture into readable text. There we go. Selection of landscape plants 304, selecting plants in the nursery 308, planting 300. Just pause it there, okay? That's how simple it is to get it in there. Just take your time to work the, the photographs so you can get a good picture of all the text. Now, reading is hard. Hey friends, Listen the free version does work. However, every 15 or 20 minutes, there's an advertisement trying to get us to upgrade to the premium version. There seems to be some benefits, free unlimited storage, stuff like that. Um, however, every 15 minutes, Snoop, I love you, bro, but don't jump in every 15 minutes. Make it like once an hour. Peace out. The Speechify app. I do recommend it. The free version has some bugs in it. However, be patient. You can work through it. I did. I'm going to be upgrading to the premium version to see if it's worth it. Remember, knowledge is power. Learning is a way to get that knowledge. Reading helps us in that learning process. So if apps like Speechify help me, I'm going to go for it. Moms, dads, teachers, let's do whatever we can to help kids get that knowledge. Okay, y'all, I've got some reading to do because I want to get that knowledge. Spread love. Curtis and welcome to the show. Today I'm in Petaluma, California at a beautiful spot. This is called um, Petaluma Bounty Farm. One. The Bounty Farm at the Stonich site, an educational farm dedicated to sustainable agriculture and healthy Petaluma food system. This land was generously donated to Petaluma Bounty for five years by Gottfried Stonich and family and we are extremely grateful. Welcome to the Bounty Farm. Uh, and I look forward to sharing this place and the wonderful human beings that work here uh, on this episode and hopefully in future episodes of the Curtis Aiken Show. So let's meet the folks that run Grand this. Trick, place. right? Did I say that correct? You said it correct. And, and Trick, tell, tell me about you and being here in Petaluma. So I actually just moved here three or four months ago from Philadelphia. Three years? Three months. years? Three months. Okay. And um, <laughs> I was looking for a farm manager position in the Bay Area just because it's kind of perfect weather, perfect for farming. Um, I was doing urban farming in Philly and I was looking for something kind of in the city and Petaluma Bounty is an urban farm. It's a little less urban than Philly, but it's still uh, surrounded by the city and, and really cool folks so I I love that okay quick question now here in the Bay Area we don't like to we don't like when people say Frisco okay however Philly it's cool right oh Philly yeah. like saying Philly yeah oh everyone says Philly everybody says you Philly, don't say right? Philadelphia oh gotcha. that's a mouthful <laughs> that's my other question comes to mind quickly before we get back to the farming is tell us about cheese steaks is that something or are you vegetarian or do you have I am vegetarian okay. but when I was there, my, my cheat was always a cheesesteak. And the, the secret is you have to go to a corner store because you'll get a $5 cheesesteak that's huge. And if you go to Gino's or whatever, you're going to get that same cheesesteak for like $15. Dang! Hey, everyone, it's me, Curtis, with my new friend. Maria. Maria. Now, I love this garden, Maria. Can you tell me a little bit about this place that we're standing in? Yeah, so Petaluma Bounty has been here for like 10, 15 years. Wow, and okay. And it's in partnership with the Petaluma, Petaluma People's Service Center. Petaluma People's People Service Services Center. Center. Yes. That's a mouthful. It is Maria. a mouthful. Let's try that five times, <laughs> jump up, turn around, and do it again. Okay, so how long have you been working with here, Maria? Uh, I started last Monday. So really? I'm, we have a newbie on the scene. Yes. So far, what's your, what's your take? I love it. It's yeah. a ton of fun. So tell me, it's Saturday, July... 2nd. Wow. I know. It's my dad's birthday. That's the only reason I know that. Happy birthday, <laughs> Pops. What's his name? Dennis. Shout out to Dennis. Dennis the Menace. De oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, is he here in Petaluma? Or? No, he's in Virginia. That's where I'm from. What part of Virginia? Southwest Virginia. And you're like Blacksburg. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Everyone. And the third member of the crew, her name is... Rainy. What is this we're doing right here? Right now we are fertilizing the summer squash. Fertilizing the summer squash? Yeah. Okay. I will talk with you a little later, okay, Ray? <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Ciao. They need volunteers. They need weed suppressants. So this straw that I'm sitting on, um, a good friend of mine, 
donated it, and um, I'm so proud of them. So um, if you want to help your community, help those who are less fortunate than we, think about checking out the Petaluma Bounty Farm. Um, PetalumaBounty.com. They're also on um, Facebook, Instagram. Did I say .com? It's .org. PetalumaBounty.org. O-R-G. And if you like seeing butterflies, there are a lot of them around here. All right, y'all, let's get to the show. Going to meet these incredible human beings that work this farm. Peace. Spread love. All right, Petalumians, we are setting out our drip tape. So with each row, we're putting two lines. We're going to plant peppers here. And you can do two peppers on either side of the row all the way down. And I'm just making sure that they're nice and straight and that they're not going to pop up. Um, luckily, these are new pieces of drip tape, so you don't have to worry too much about holes, which is a pleasure, but we do reuse our drip tape. This is just the field we said. These four or five beds will be peppers and then eggplant and then um, maybe potatoes. I haven't figured it out yet, um, but we got one bed done. Um, so we have one field, two fields, and three fields left to go after that, so we could use your help. You are the social media expert? I'm the engagement and education coordinator and then the farmer's market ambassador coordinator. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do that again. So that's a mouthful also. Education and engagement coordinator. Okay. And then the farmer's market ambassador coordinator. So you go to all the farmer's markets locally and... Eventually, yeah. I just started. That's like a brand new grant Petaluma Bounty just got. But our Fantastic. goal is to make farmer's markets more like welcoming and make people feel like they know what to do when they get there too. So we're going to be in charge of hiring some ambassadors. So its jobs are to like welcome people, help them navigate. And if they have like CalFresh or uh, what do you call them? Food stamps. Yes. To know how to use those and make sure farmers all know how to accept them. So that it's called EBT now. Right? Yes, we, that's we, what it is. Yeah, There's like we, six we names. We kind of changed that name. I'm, I'm, I'm big into not shaming anyone. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. And so the idea is that that beautiful EBT card is just like a credit card. You use it, you know, so it's... We got to feed folks. Exactly. So welcome to town. Um, now, I'm going to meet some folks out. Today yeah. is Saturday, volunteer day, right? Exactly. So we're going to send this big shout out again to Bert. Happy birthday, Dennis the Menace, back in VA. Yes, still in Virginia. Still in Virginia. Um, so tell me what we're looking for, at, not only as an engagement, when we want people to come to the farm, mm -hmm. what do we need to grow the bounty? A lot of hands, <laughs> a lot that. of patience, and a lot of time. Okay. So like right now we're doing, especially because it's Saturday, so it's market day. Oh. So we go to the Petaluma Farmer's Market from two to five. So Saturday okay. is your big harvest day. So gotcha. we did harvested strawberries, garlic, I don't think what's back there, zucchini, peaches. So that's a lot of Saturday. It's just getting all the veggies and fruits off. Sorry, off the. No, no, no. I was just, I was just saying off to the markets. Oh, we, yes, we, uh, that we're cool. way. We're, we're way cool here. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm digging the heck out of this market. Okay. So, yeah. So we're loading up, getting ready to go mm -hmm. to the farmers market. We'll be there from two to five p.m. Five p.m. So, well, be too late to get you to come out today, but, but come next, out next Saturday exactly. and the Saturday after that. And, and I'll give our, we have a push. We have our on-farm market starting July 13th on Wednesdays, 3 to 6 p.m. So you it. can come here and get your veggies and also peek at the actual farm and kind of take a stroll around. And put some hands to work. We need exactly. to help pulling we weeds. Do. Weeds, that's like the biggest thing right now. Yeah. It's just endless leading, which now that we have straw, we'll have time for other things too. Fantastic. All right, y'all. Everybody, this is Marie. Check around the website, Instagram, what all yeah. the stuff we wanted to go to. All the Things. Can you give us the uh, sites? Uh, if like, you Google Petaluma Bounty, the website will pop up. I'll find them and I'll drop them in the um, in the captures. Okay, y'all. Maria, I'm going to meet some more great folks at the Bounty. High five it. And I like to end my segments, but spread love. It's always about spreading love, okay? So you say spread love. Spread love. That's it. Boom, shakalaka. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Uh, part of it is just that. It's beautiful. Um, I love getting in the dirt and doing things that clear my mind and gardening is one of those things. It's very therapeutic um, and I love the idea of producing food for people that need it and um, meeting some great people out here. Some young people gives me, give me energy so here I am. I love it. So do you live here in Petaluma? I live here part-time. Um, I come, I actually my main home is in Half Moon Bay. 
on the coast. So that's another reason I actually get some sunshine out here during the summer, which I can't not get on the coast. So it's, it's just wonderful. It provides everything. Uh, Julie, I, as a, I'm getting a little emotional thinking about what you just said, okay. uh, because I'm a bleeding heart as well. You know, if it's okay to say that to you. Sure. Um, so how, like, we're going to ask folks to come join us out here. What would you say to someone? Why, how, let's encourage folks to come volunteer to help with this beautiful farm. Um, I would say that if, um, Can you that for me? oh, um, I would say that to encourage other people to come and work at this beautiful farm out here, Petaluma Bounty, um, is if you have a passion for wanting to help your community, but you also don't want to be sitting behind a computer or a desk and you want to get your, 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 your fingers dirty, your fingernails dirty, and you don't mind doing that, um, that this is a perfect opportunity because you have a wonderful support staff here, you have a wonderful farmer and trick that guides you and, and, and trick staff as well. And it is just a wonderful way to give back to the community, is with food, with providing sustenance and nutrition. I love it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Curtis. Thank you for asking. Sunflowers cause me to smile. So does Rainy, the farm assistant at Petaluma Bounty. Listen to some more of her story. Hi, I'm Rainy. I'm the new farm assistant for Petaluma Bounty. I got here on Friday, started working, went to the farmer's market on Saturday. I want to learn more about food sustainability and how to grow healthy food, so to make healthy people. I am also a registered nurse and I've seen how food can affect people's health and I want to be part of the change to prevent uh, chronic illnesses. My favorite food is my mom's homemade lentil soup. And why? Because it tastes really yummy and she makes it when I come home. To so Petaluma Bounty's mission uh, really resonates with my morals and is part of the reason that I'm here is that we try to feed our community. So our number one uh, goal here is to make fresh food accessible. Um, you know, a lot of cities, especially on the East Coast, there's no farms anywhere. 